Questions? Um, so you're also a blogger, right? I did blog. So I started blogging in 2010 <laughs> and then I had my first job and I got my first job because well, it was, so I was really busy finishing my bachelor project. I was in my apartment, not leaving the house, sleeping on a very weird schedule. And my apartment was a mess. I sometimes show these pictures from that time during presentations. It was like messy. And I got an email from an agency after I've published an article. And the pub article was very much about how, how floor plans of buildings are changing because people no longer live in like mother father kid situation but a lot of young professionals live together and share apartments and i was i was writing about how architecture is sort of changing because of those circumstances and then about one week or two weeks later i get an email from an agency and this agency is like hey um we have been reading your blog for a while that's what i mean by share your work and share what you're excited about and we are hiring would you like to talk to us so I never had to go out and just like try to convince companies to hire me because that's really exhausting and I would probably not be able to handle that. I was just like saying, hey, the entire world, I'm really excited about this subject. And then the person who was looking for that sort of person excited about that came to me. So usually the companies find you? Mostly. Just because I'm so busy doing something that I like and then I tell everyone about it who listens and because sometimes my friends wouldn't listen I would write it on the internet and then someone still found me. And for which platform are you usually being found? Um, I think the weirdest client request I got was hey I overheard you talking to this guy at the pub at midnight and I've been looking for someone who would do my new website. So I think that was the most interesting one, where I was like, I have no idea what's happening here. Um, I, so SOS Kinderdorf, one of the team members was following me on Instagram for a while. Um, I don't know, it's, I really just, you know, I'm, I think I'm just like out there and to be found. And I'm also like next, my next step is to rebrand and sort of work on a new content strategy for myself to once again because at some point you get to this point where you might not want to be working on whatever you're working on and then whatever people find you those are the offers that come to you right so it's like if you don't want to get those sort of offers you have to actively think about what sort of offers you want to receive and then you have to provide the internet with that so i really wanted to do an international expansion strategy and I was talking to Kickstarter and they were like, hey, we've seen on your website, you have experience with this. And I was like, yeah, I did, but it was a failed experience, but it still works with them. So it's like, you can, you know, sort of make, make the case for someone to, I'm not saying you cannot just like fake it, right? It's like, I still was able to talk about my experience, but I just summarized it in a nice word. And I was, I just said, this is something that I could potentially work on for you and then they read it and they were like hey we have read that you would like to do this or we have read that you can do this and then we talked about me being able to do that but I still sort of gave them the hook where they were like oh yeah we have noticed that we have a common ground do you, do you find it hard to decline a job offer? Um, no but I wish sometimes I was quicker with declining Sometimes I sit on it and I notice that my belly feeling sort of says like I would not be excited about it and it takes me too long to say I'm not excited about it. That happens. And I also notice, right? It's like sometimes, sometimes you start working on something and it's like things take longer if you don't enjoy them. And I don't really have the time for that. Or don't want to have the time to push through something that I don't care about. Thing about being well, you do have to leave the house <laughs> because you don't have to, but you have to make the effort. I think you just have to you have to make a lot of decisions. It's like half of your job is to make decisions, and sometimes a lot of people struggle with making decisions. I mean, they hire managers just to make decisions, right? So it's like you're sort of everything. 
And it's funny, it's like walking out of uni, you, you have no, it's like realizing all these things. I was like, I remember when, when they got, gave me the job of being the project manager. It's like, sure. And then I realized that the project manager is someone who doesn't actually produce the work. It's just the person who is informed about what everyone is doing, trying to keep everyone on board. That's a job. I would never, you know, it would never come to my head before that you can do this as, as a job. But you can. Questions? Oh yeah, so I have a BA in interior architecture, which might be why I like to think in systems, because when you think about how a building is structured and how a building works, you sort of have to think about the system and how people move through it. And then I did a master's in fashion communication design, which was again about how the cycle of fashion functions. So it's like, What's the production, the sales cycle, what's the communication cycle to the public? I was, I didn't really care as much about the beautiful side of that. I wasn't really into what's the fabric and what's the material and what color. I didn't really care. I was like, okay, how does this function? But I have a complete, like, I have a creative background and I have people come to me asking me business questions. And what's, what's been very interesting for me as a designer or as an educated designer, because now I'm not sure if I would call myself a designer, is there was at some point this word of design thinking popped up and I was like, what are you talking about? So you learn those skills in school as a designer, but I would have never, I would have never perceived them as business skills. And me coming into the industry as a, as a designer who sort of understands how businesses work, it's much easier for me to take businesses apart and point to whatever is not working. Doesn't mean I, I know anything about business. I just look for what the, so it's like, if you would have a door or you would have a corridor and the corridor wouldn't be wide enough, I would have to look for the reason. And I'm sort of, I think, I'm sort of thinking about businesses and communications the same way I would think about how a building is set up. If that answers for your question. <laughs> I have like all these eyes on me. <laughs> Questions? What do you see yourself in 10 years? Oh gosh, this, this question. Okay, may I see myself in 10 years? Um, that's a very good question. I'm not even sure if I can answer that, to be honest. I, I completely stopped so it's, I did this, you know how for consulting companies you have to do this um, assessment center and talk to those people and analyze just um, balance sheets and all that. So I did that and I talked to them and they were like, you know, it's so interesting. You have, you have the profile of a consultant, but the one thing that makes no sense is you are not ambitious. And I said it to my friends and they were like, they laughed at it. They, like had such a good laugh about saying I'm not ambitious and what I realized is I am ambitious in a very different way than what the business world thinks is sort of this climbing up the ladder in terms of ambition. It's like I don't really care to have a car and to you know make a million or be richer than everyone else. It's but I really care about having a really good day you know and sort of enjoying myself today and not thinking about oh when I'm old I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna um, go in pension and then travel the world because I know I can do it now and not have health issues or something so it's like I think my ambition just is in a very different time frame and so there's this very weird questionnaire where a teacher asks a child and they're like what do you want to be when you grow up and this kid writes some happy and then this teacher writes back um, you didn't understand the question and the child writes back you didn't understand life and I think that's sort of the same question in terms of ambition right it's like what is ambition one last question and <laughs> 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 Well, you are you are responsible for it yourself, right? So I just paid back my student loan 
I had a student loan that I was expected to pay back in five years. I paid it back in October. And for me, it was always this moment, because I paid for my entire education, which was a private university myself, I was always like, okay, I first need to figure out how to pay back my loan. And so that was my first priority. And you always have to prioritize. But once again, it's your, you know, it's, it's in your hands. And when you think about the pension um, system, and when you, it's, it's, not, it's not necessarily working, right? So it's like when you think about the entire system is, there are more and more old people. I don't know the statistics by heart, but when you look at the statistics, how, like percentage wise, how many older people there are than let's say 40 or 50 or 60, and how the retirement age is changing, then you also realize that there are less and less kids to pay for that. And also, because I know that our parents grew money by giving them to your bank account, like, you know, savings account. I got, an email, I got a letter from my bank two years ago telling me that my interest rate went from 1.25 to 0.02%, which, like, my money devaluates by being in my bank. So that's, that's definitely not a solution. And just because that whole thing with, are, we, are there enough kids to pay for our rent it's a question, like, I can't tell you how the world is going to be in 30, 40 years. I can tell you that people probably won't have smartphones. Think about it. To us, like, smartphones, it's, a, it's so new, right? It came, it came out maybe in 2009, an iPhone 8, maybe? It's not long ago, right? And now it's like, it's so normal for us, but it's like, Kids nowadays, I assume, don't even know what a tape is. What? See? <laughs> That's my... <laughs> so it's like, you don't know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? 